Hello everyone, my name is Piyush. Hope you are all doing great and staying safe. Today, I will be here uh, to take you through the introduction to the AWS security. So AWS security session, we have series of uh, sessions in this, but uh, today it's a very introductory section in which we will be learning about how security is important. What are all security features AWS cloud provides? and uh, how we can leverage maximum security for our applications. So uh, as you can see on my screen, when we talk about the security, security is one of the most important pillar for an application. If, if as a customer, you come up with an idea that, hey, I need this particular application to be hosted in, in, in some of the cloud, not only AWS, in any of the cloud, then you definitely talk about different pillars of the cloud, which can be the security, which can be cost, which can be scalability, which can be flexibility, which can be disaster recovery, which can be highly available, high, highly availability and, and many more. So security is one of the major feature under that. So if we talk about security here, so security is not only, you know, only one's responsibility, if we can say as a CSP, like as a cloud service provider, it's not only responsibility of a cloud service provider to secure our data, okay? It is equally important on the other side as well, which is customer side. So on that, AWS has published the shared responsibility model, which is uh, a response, a shared model between customer and AWS both, okay? so. In this, if you can see on my screen, in the bottom, these are the responsibility of AWS, which is responsibility for security of the cloud, okay? And above, if you can see, it's a responsibility for the customer for having security in the cloud. So if you can see on the screen, the off and in these two words are to be uh, more focused on. So if we talk about AWS here, we know there are different regions, there are availability zones, there are age location, these are physical locations, okay? These are different terms in AWS cloud. And the security of the region, the security of the availability zones, the security of the age location is the responsibility of, uh, is the responsibility of uh, <clears throat> AWS. And then further we go, the underlying hardware. So whatever the EC2 instances or the virtual machine or the database servers, whatever we have in our different availability zones and different regions, that is also hardware security is also responsibility of AWS. And then on top of that, uh, I can say, uh, as I mentioned, like compute, storage, database, networking, everything is secured by AWS. And then on top of that, they have, uh, software. When we say software, it's an, not the client application. It's the application which we used for, you know, creating the different type of architectures on the AWS cloud. So basically this is come up, uh, this is uh, totally taken care by AWS. And on top of that, now when customers comes into the picture now as a customer, suppose I'm a customer and I have my application so my application definitely have some data. Okay, my application have a have a code block. Okay, my application have a certain information over there. So uh, it is my responsibility how I am storing my data on the AWS, how I am securing my data on the AWS. So <clears throat> talking about uh, the different type of in integrations and the di different type of encryption i would say the different type of encryptions are available on the aws but do, uh, but adopting that particular uh, encryption is the responsibility of the customers so uh, we have the options for client side encryption we have the server side encryption and we have the different networking traffic protections also we have different identity management we have different authorizations on the on the AWS, but it is totally depend upon customer to customer what they opt for. Then we have operating system network and firewall configuration. So see, basically we 
the underlying hardware provided by the AWS, the security is provided by AWS. But on top of that hardware, we have operating system, we have networking device, we have firewall configuration. So all depend upon user to user, how they can configure their, you know, firewall configuration, how they can configure their operating system, how they can configure their network, what level of security they want. And on top of that, now they have their platform, they have their application, they have their identity and access management, okay? To whom they want to give access, what type of access they want to reveal, and what type of application it is, what type of platform it is using, what all security features can be applicable on that particular platform, or what uh, like what authentication application is using, what authorization application is using. And on top of that, we have end user customers data as uh, suppose I'm hosting an e-commerce application. So my so my application can have a lot of lot of uh, customer data on that and having, you know, the critical information such as uh, credit card, debit card details and other financial stuff. And and so, so it's a responsibility uh, of the you know application uh, as my application or as you know to provide the security to the customer's data it should not be uh vulnerable so this is how this is how it works this is a basic concept of the shared responsibility model and if we talk about the if we talk about like what type of all securities or what what we can think of as a security so if you can see we have a different design principle provided by aws for the security pillar okay so <clears throat> as a so there are seven design principle i would say for the security in the cloud and we will go one by one and uh, we will go one by one so the first one is to implement a strong identity foundation. So basically for your application, uh, all, you should always have the least privilege concept on your account, on your AWS account. And you should have a centralized identity management, okay? For your AWS account, for your all the AWS resources, you should always have the traceability enable. You should always have for your application monitoring, alerting, and the different actions on, on, on each of the uh, monitoring and alerting, okay? And also a customer should have uh, the log enable, the metric collection, and everything to be can be used for the investigation in case of any incident. So the second point, which is enable traceability, that is also very important in terms of security. Third one is apply security at all the layers. That is very important. When we talk about layers, you can understand the layers in, in a format of like, if you have three tier application, so you may have the web tier, you may have the app tier and you have the database tier. So <clears throat> these are the different tiers or these are the different layers you can say, or, or we can say, we can say that we when we talk about the different layers it's not only the different type of tiers but if it, it can be it can be understood in the format of osi model as well where we have the network layer where we have the presentation layer so so the layer should each layer should be covered with the security so that is what it is uh, explained here uh, that the at the network level we should have the vp we should have the load balancing we should have the security groups to you know um, in and out of the traffic and, and and all of that. The next we have is the automated security best practices. So we always follow the best mechanism. So whatever the platform you are using for building your application or whatever the languages you are using, all those have the best practices to use in your application. It may be including the security features for your code. It may be for some of the libraries. It may be for any of the platform you are using. So always use the best practices for your application. It can be the best practices for database. It can be for your code. It can be for your platform etc etc now uh, <clears throat> moving forward protect your data in the tr in transit and at rest state so that is also very important uh, when we have uh, when we have the customer data so you can have the data into two format it can be at rest or it can be in transit so the sensitive information for all the sensitive information make sure that uh, you are using encryption you are using tokenization you are using access control wherever wherever it fits into the application so that is also one of the best practices 
uh, when we talk about the security next keep people away from the data that is also very important like uh, not everybody in your team should have the access of the critical data please make sure that uh, make sure that uh, the restricted access the least privileged access should always be followed next we have the prepare for the security event so uh, always remember that uh, whatever securities we are using there is still a chance of you know to have some breakdown in the security so always we should always have the incident management in place we should always have the processes and policies uh, for incident management we should always have the it so that it, it will be easy to recover the web re recover the application it become very easy for detection detection and the investigation and the recovery okay okay so uh, i will i will take you through a few of the live examples like how we can do or how we can achieve the certain securities on compute database and networking but before that i also want to talk about the best practices of uh, securities in the cloud which is here mentioned by the aws in in, in the white paper I, I will share these links with you in the description panel and uh, best in, in when we talk about the best practices okay you should uh, you should always ask certain question to yourself when you are hosting any application and you want to make it secure so the first question uh, you can ask is how do you securely operate your workload okay so when you talk about this key that okay hey my application is already there in aws but how can i securely operate my workloads my application my services in the aws account so then so the answer is uh, you you should always look for the identity and access management if you guys know it's an introductory section so i i i'll not go into the detail but uh, if you heard about the im rules the im user policies and all that so that all comes under the identity and access management where you can have the list privileges for your users list privileges uh, for your teammates so that you know uh, with, with the least privilege you can maintain the security you can operate your uh, operate your workload with securely you can have the passwords and mfa everything in place for your accounts okay so that is how uh, when you think about operating your workload security always think about the identity and access management okay the next question you can ask to yourself is how do you manage the identity for people and machine okay and 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 followed by how do you manage permission for people and machines so that is again something related to the related to the iam you can have the security tokens in place you can have the federated logins you can have the different uh, mfa enforced for different accounts and you you on on rotation basis you can rotate the passwords you can have the access and secret policy access and secret power <clears throat> policies rotation you can have uh, you you can have the credentials rotations and everything right so that is how you can manage your machines your people on the aws account so uh, in in detail if you want please go through this but overall if i to if i need to tell you the summary so this is all talking about credential rotation talking about aws security token services it's talking about uh, how you can manage uh, the credential how you, how you can rotate the credential what type of monitoring you need for user login and and stuff okay going forward we have the next question how do you detect and investigate the security event that is also very important to uh, to know that how how you how you will detect and investigate so having the security is one thing but it is always recommended to check your logs to check uh, your matrices against the you know improper events which are happening in your account so you should always have the log management that is that is one of the key ask for the well architect workload okay in aws account so please make sure that you always have that so you should have the monitoring you should have the log management you should have the restrictions over the vpcs 
to achieve uh, and detect the security events. VPC can also have the VPC flow logs, uh, like who, like check what unauthenticated event has happened. Okay. So these are these are a few of the things you can do for detecting and investigating the security events further moving. How do you protect your network resource or how do you protect your compute resource? That is data protection is always a key ask for for security. OK, so as a customer, I would say as a customer, the data protection is completely owned by the customer. It's a customer's responsibility to make sure that their data is totally secure into the AWS. Okay. So again, uh, you should have you should have the in different encryption keys. You should you can have the uh, customer provided keys as well, and you can have the you know uh, AWS managed key as well. And there should be a regular key rotation. There should be detailed login for your for your workloads and. Uh, and you should uh, always design your storage system for data projection with the resiliency. So if you can take an example of S3, so S3 have uh, the 11 nines of durability over the over, for an object over an year. So the durability level, you know, with this with this level of durability, you you rarely have a chance to lose your object. Okay, so that should be that should be one thing you, you keep into mind when you are storing any data on the AWS that comes under the data protections. Okay, moving further, you can also think about when you are thinking about the security, you can ask yourself how 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 do you classify your data? How do you protect your data at rest? How do you protect your data in transit? So when we talk about in transit of data make sure that you are uh, your data uh, transaction is happening over https with encryption and description of the data uh, generally you can use the load balancers as well with with http secure protocol and uh, make sure that you your all the aws apis are https protected you always have ssl in place you always have uh, <clears throat> you are using uh, you are using a detailed login available for all the contents for for all your applications. So at rest, if you would say, then you should you can use the KMS keys for encryption of your data. You can uh, you can rotate the key for uh, key for your volumes for S3 bucket, etc. So make sure that it is again comes under the customer's responsibility when we talk about the security uh, of or data protections. OK, how do you let that, So the last question you can think about here is uh, how do you an anticipate or respond to and recover from the incident? So the, as I mentioned earlier, when we are talking about uh, the seven different features, you know, which we require in the security. So so having the security is one thing, but you after you know in the back end, you also need a team who who can look for any of the incident happen or any any breach happen to the security. So that should always be in place. And for that, you always have a good monitoring and good logging and also a good alert system for your application. So let's quickly uh, move to the practical thing and I'll, I'll take you through like for compute if everybody is uh, everybody is aware about uh, creating the virtual machine right so let me quickly log into the my account so here i am this is my aws account so i'll i'll quickly take you through <clears throat> that how you can enable the securities for ec2 so whenever you are creating the instance okay let's click on the launch instance we can select any <clears throat> default image with the default instance type. OK. So if you can see here <clears throat> in the step number three, we are configuring the instance detail. So one thing what you can do is if you if you have created your own VPC, if you have created your, your own subnet with few of the limitations, with few of the restrictions, okay, as your application or workload requires, you can select 
that particular here okay so i have these two here uh, in my account and i am selecting the default one so with this whatever the security is applied to this particular network that will come to the ec2 instance as well okay and similarly i can choose off uh, all the available subnets into my vpc but again if any security applied to my subnet that is automatically will apply to the instance as well okay or uh, further we will have this all this as a default we can enable as we talked about monitoring and logging a lot for the security purposes so you, we we have an option of enabling the cloud watch detail monitoring here if we check this box and uh, we will have the all all uh, detailed monitoring enabled for the ec2 instance okay now when we are when we are adding the stories right in this particular tab we have an option to encrypt our data volume okay so either we can create a kms before creating the ec2 instances and uh, and then we'll come back to this particular dashboard and we can see here in list our recently created kms key but if we are not creating any we can use the default as well so this is basically to encrypt our volume so that is data protection at rest okay so this is a second point like first point i told you about the networking and uh, <clears throat> networking and the monitoring and the second point we talked about uh, the storage encryption okay so next we have the tags we can have the tags for identity and you know for cost management as well and for security purposes as well like if we set some of the alert so the tags can help us to identify our resources on the aws account okay and we can have uh, a lot of automation on also on our aws account with with help of uh, tags as well now this is another important concept like security group so what it is doing a security group is setting up the firewall rules to control the traffic on the instances we can add the in and out of all the traffic here and uh, <clears throat> so so make sure that you are limiting limiting the protocols you are limiting the port ranges to a particular source you you should not open it to the worldwide which is uh, which is this particular ip okay and uh, if it is not actually required so so if we talk about ssh so we don't need everyone to ssh our system right so it can be a custom ip or i can say it's like my ip it will automatically take up that with this particular ip source ip uh, i can log in or i can ssh into my instances so similarly for your application suppose you are using uh, <clears throat> you are using any http protocol or you are using any https or any any other protocol you are having suppose database as ms sql so maybe you are using this particular port and so similarly for database right this port should not be open for anywhere so this should not be there because this is not a recommended setting that your your database should be accessible from anywhere right on this particular port so basically basically what we can say is uh, this is one of uh, the security features of uh, ec2 so if we just summarize this we have vpc we have sub we have subnet level we have uh, different type of roles to attach we have security groups and we have different type of monitoring we have data encryption for ebs volume so if we talk about one of the services which is ec2 we have that much of security in place and on top of that if this ec2 we are placing in front in you know behind behind any load balancer or with a with a auto scaling group then we can have the additional type of security over there as well uh, with the elb there is a different security group it comes with and they, there also we can have the vpc level or subnet level security for that so quickly i will show you uh, next uh, the iam which is we, we talked about right identity and access management so what you can do is uh, let's go to the iam console quickly okay so this is our iam console you can see what we can do is we can create groups here we can we can create users here we can have a different type of role here and we have the policies to be you know for different type of users groups and roles other than that uh, we can customize our url as well we can have mfa enabled here we can have password rotation policies 
here everything we can uh, we can access from here okay so this is a identity and access management so we talked about uh, the least privileges concept a lot right so we we always should take care like uh, if in our team somebody is deploying the code on ec2 and he is a developer guy and he don't need the access of database so what we can do is we can create a user for that particular <clears throat> teammate uh, with with the limited access of ec2 only we are not giving any other access to him so that will call as a feature of uh, list privileges so we can go and we can check the default roles here like these are the roles which i have created uh, for 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 my access okay and for my applications you can go ahead and create the users like you can add user and you can also generate the access key and the secret key for your user as well okay so this is uh, this is a high level uh, of identity and access management next i want to show you uh, the security credential tab so if you go to your uh, account and if you see here my security credentials so let's go to the my security credentials so here you can see uh, it it redirect us to the identity and access management but here you can see how you can control the password okay you can change your password from here you can enable the multi factor authentication for your account for your root user account you can have the access and secret key you can see uh, i have access and secret key created and but i can delete it and i can create a new one also then you have the cloud front key pairs you can you can create a new key pair or you can upload your own as well and then you have the x5 5 node 9 certificate settings from here and also your account identifier what is your account id and and other information okay so this is how you can control your security credential on the aws account okay next i will recommend you to go through uh, the security white paper to read about the security pillar like what i have talked about the share responsibility model how security is a main pillar what are the responsibility at uh, what are the aws responsibilities what are the customers responsibilities okay and uh, in our next session we will definitely deep dive with the with the security features we will more deep dive with the compliances like how the compliances work on the aws and uh, how on the we will also deep dive with the specific like database and network security how the network security works how the database security works okay but uh, before closing this session i i i i also want to take you through this particular blog which is very important that how how to quickly find and update your access key password mfa setting in aws console so i have already shown you this one but if you have any doubt related to this particular dashboard i highly recommend you to go through this and you can find each and every detail with uh, uh, specific steps like how you can change the access key how you can generate the access key how you can change your password how can you rotate your password how the mfa can be enabled and so on okay so i'll highly recommend you to go through this particular and uh, yeah in this session uh, so just to summarize we talk about share responsibility model we talk about best practice practices for the security in a cloud we talk about what are the questions we should have in our mind when we talk about security in the cloud we talk about uh, uh in the practical session we talk about ec2 security what are the different ways to secure an ec2 we talk about identity and access management and also we talk about the password rotation creating the multi factor authentication access key secrets key and all the account identifiers so i think that is uh, all i have for today for this particular session but yes we will in, in upcoming section we will will go more deep with the security of aws and uh, we'll learn how we can secure uh, our application our data with a uh, high level of securities so thank you thank you for joining today and we'll we'll see you in in the next lecture thank you